and welcome to this week's information-packed instalment of Life Support. The only lifestyle program that gives you the confidence to continue living your life. Too true. I'm Penny, and tonight I'll be showing you all how to get out of doing jury duty for the man. And coming up, I'll be giving you the drum on the best way to make your house fire safe by keeping those dead leaves out of your guttering. I'm Sigourney, and later on, I'll be teaching all you modern women the simplest way to assess a prospective lover's performance potential. And I'll show you how to use some surefire shopping science to colour coordinate your latest purchase. I'll have Dr Rudy here, and I have some practical advice for you tonight, including some preventative techniques for dealing with domestic violence. And in a totally unrelated segment, I'll be showing you less attractive young ladies some fabulous makeover techniques. Oh, Dr Rudy, that sounds like a wonderful segment. That's right, Sigourney. No ordinary-looking young lady should miss it. Well, it sure looks like we've got a jam-packed show for you. That's right. We've got heaps to teach you tonight. So let's get this show on the road. Just as everyone knows in their heart of hearts that smoking is cool, everybody knows that seatbelts are for wussets. There's nothing that takes the zing out of hurtling down the highway more than the strapped down dag machine. The coolest person in history was James Dean. And while he remains an enigmatic figure, there's one thing we know about him for sure. He didn't wear a seatbelt. However, the nanny state, as run by the man, is determined to stop you from being cool. You can cop a hefty fine for not wearing a seatbelt. And on long weekends and public holidays, if a peak spots you, you can even lose your licence, which is majorly uncool. So, here's a simple way to scam the man and retain your cool. It's a seatbelt T-shirt. With a can of black paint and a wide brush, you can make your own seatbelt T-shirt in about five seconds. Now you can be fine free, no matter how many cops are staring at you as you zoom past them, free and easy. Plus, you know how really cool you are. This one's for you, Jimmy. I love my workshop. But it seems space is at a premium these days. 21st century urban living means most of us are moving to increasingly smaller residential spaces. So, what do you do when you've got a workshop and know where to house it in your new apartment? Here's the answer. Get yourself some brightly coloured paints and start painting your tools in some simple primary colours. My hammer is royal blue, my saw black and my chisel set a nice cherry red. And I'm thinking I may even tint my spirit leveller in a ripple green. Now, in case you're wondering what's going on, this is called modern art. And these tools on the wall is what's called an installation. It's kind of a brash postmodern representation of the male ethos restricted in a contemporary urban context. At least that's what I tell the ladies. Now, if you want to do a bit of a workshop activity, just take your tools off the wall and use them. And when you're finished, they transform from a tool into an attractive piece of contemporary art. It's the perfect marriage of form and function. So take a tip from Todd and transplant your tools today. And you can transform yourself from a tradesman into an artiste and experience the best of both worlds. modern woman loves to have sex, it's still difficult to choose who to have sex with. Although he may be attractive, it doesn't necessarily mean he'll be a giving and generous lover. So here's a good way to discern the demon lovers from the duds. All you have to do is invite him over for a home cooked meal. Then when he arrives, tell him there's been a little mix up. I'm so sorry, I got my timing all wrong. I've got all the ingredients to prepare this fantastic entree. It'll take us about 40 minutes to prepare and cook, but it tastes fantastic. It's my absolute favourite. <laughs> or I've got this fillet steak, which can be ready to eat in just minutes. So, what do you think? Should we take the time to prepare a delicious entree together? Or are you so hungry that you just want to forget the entree and gobble the main meal right now? <laughs> entree, main, entree. Main, entree, main. <laughs> a 
as soon as he's made his decision, you can make yours. Any man who's prepared to delay his meat pleasure for 40 minutes to make a lovely and fiddly entree just to please you is the kind of man you want to spend the night with. A long, long night. <laughs> bon appetit. So. Gee, Sigourney, I've got to admit, that really is a great idea. I only wish I'd known that earlier. Why is that, Penny? Well. The other night, this guy had me over to his place and cooked me this meal that was like eight little courses. Degustation. Oh, you get to try a little bit of everything and it goes on for ages and ages. I like to call it Tetsuya style. So what happened? Well, he was so into the cooking that I thought he was gay. So I faked an attack of meningococcal disease and left. <sighs> oh, Penny. Well, I was in the mood for a bit that night. Thought I wasn't going to get it with him, so I didn't want to waste my time. I've still got his number, but... Good girl. Well, I guess you'll be listening a little more attentively to my advice in the future. Maybe. Speaking of listening, here's Dr Rudy with a choice way to get your kids to listen to you when you're telling them off. Ada? Ada, listen to me. I've got something to say to you. I'm talking to you, boy! How's a Dr Rudy here? Do you have trouble disciplining your child? Do they ignore your answer back when you're trying to lay down the law? Well, today I'm going to show you how to make your child heed every word you say. Have you ever watched a child watching TV? They sit there slack-jawed, wide-eyed and completely transfixed by the screen. And they watch every video they own repeatedly. And you can't fast forward through the tedious bits because the child will have memorized every word and intonation. So, if you want your child to listen to you, simply videotape yourself telling them off. And when you play it on the television, you will have their complete attention. They'll even want to watch it time and time again. <clears throat> Ara, clean up your Lego when you're finished playing with it. If you leave your Lego on the floor one more time where people can tread on it, Christmas will be cancelled. As you can see, it works beautifully. And you can build a library capable of chastising him for just about anything. Because even children instinctively know when someone is on television telling you what to do, you must do everything they say. Dr. Rudy says so. Barnard. Do you want to know why? Because I said so, that's why. Because I'm a judge. Oh, g'day. Cleaning out your gutters is a grotty job. But when you live in Australia, it's just something that's got to be done. Because these dry leaves are a fire hazard. That doesn't mean, however, that you've got to get them out by hand. Because when the bushfire brigade protects a big area from fire, they don't pick out all the leaves, they backburn. So, take a tip from Todd and do a bit of backburning in your own gutters. Now you can protect your home from fire by fire, just like the professionals do. Oh yeah, just so you know, it's good to have a hose handy before you start back burning. <laughs> oh, and did you see that Bruce Springsteen retrospective? Oh yeah, he's still the boss. Yeah, have you been watching the repeats of 30-something on TV1? Oh, I know, it's been great. God, can you believe we used to dress that way? <laughs> Middle-aged people are so boring. I usually try and avoid them. But of course, my parents are middle-aged, so I can't avoid spending time with them. Especially not when I need to borrow money. So, if you have to spend time with the oldies, it's worth taking a couple of preventative measures so you're not bored out of your brain. The reason middle-aged people are so boring is because nothing ever happens to them. And that's something you can fix. And that's only the beginning. Last night? Amazing. So you just came home and found it like this? Yes. They didn't even steal anything. They just broke in and vandalised the place. Really? Well, do they know who did it? Yes. The police have arrested a couple of Mediterranean boys. You're kidding! 
No, they're in court next week. You're kidding. Can I come along? Well, of course you can. I've never seen you take such an interest in what goes on round here. That's the truth. I'll have Dr Rudy here with more timely guidance for all you young ladies out there who are less than ideal looking. Like Trisha here. Trisha is 18 years old and has never had a boyfriend. Understandable, for as you can see, she is slightly overweight, has terrible skin and rather greasy hair. This combination has kept the boys at bay all her life, but now she wants a boyfriend and has come to me hoping for a remedy to her unfortunate appearance. Well, Trisha, I think I can help you. Oh, really, Dr. Rudy? Do you think you can help me look better? Oh, good God, no. That's not the answer. What you need to do is make yourself look even more unattractive. I'll show you how. There you are. You look more unattractive, but you do look more interesting. Now people will assume you like to look this way and will think it is your choice rather than your genes. Is that all there is to it? Not quite. Now you need to attend university, preferably studying for an arts or communications degree. And once you're there, you're guaranteed to meet plenty of boys who are trying not to look shallow by going out with an interesting looking girl like you. Thanks, Dr. Rudy. My pleasure. So there you go, girls. If you're ugly, at least be interesting. Bana. There's a lot more that you have to draw from yourself to be interesting. Attractive takes a hairdresser, a nice outfit and a nice pair of shoes. Interesting takes a lot more, I think. Yeah, I don't mind colourful women. Or more, more colours of the rainbow, more <laughs> smash. <laughs> My nigga. No, I don't like them weird as I dye their hair orange and then they wear, like, I don't know, crap yeah. clothes and they look like a bunch of idiots. I've never considered what men like. Oh, Dr. Rudy, I must say, I was quite shocked by your makeover. Can't say I like it, but I'm not sure conventional cover-up methods would have worked. Believe me, Sigourney, it was no time for subtlety. But what sort of man would she attract? Well, I've heard she's become quite popular on campus. In fact, she's having an affair with her screen studies tutor. Really? Not only that, apparently she's also in the family way. Oh, Dr. Rudy, that's wonderful. Another success story. That's right, but right now, let's take a look at this. Hardcore pornography. It's one of the most enjoyable things in a single man's life. But once you get yourself a lady friend, well, you can kiss the X-rated pleasure factory goodbye. It's merchant ivory time for you. From now on, the only chance you'll get to watch adult entertainment is on a prawn and porn night with your fellow tradesmates. And there's not a lot of point getting all steamed up with a bunch of blokes. You want to be watching it with her. And now... You can. That's right. There is a way for you to get your lady friend to be just as eager as you are to watch something really disgusting and depraved. All you got to do is go down to your local video store and rent a French film. Don't worry about which one. They're all the same. Now, simply dub the soundtrack of your French film over the top of your favourite porno. Don't worry if the sound bears no relation to what's happening on screen. Bad dubbing is traditional in all French films. Next, tell your lady friend that you've obtained a rare copy of the controversial French masterpiece Petite Blanc Vu, which has been banned in this country by narrow-minded fascists. Her pretension factors will kick in big time and she'll sit through the most depraved stuff imaginable, as long as it's artistic. And there you have it, hours of filthy porn you can enjoy as a couple. Makes a very powerful statement, doesn't it? One of the worst things about being a doctor is having to fix up injuries of domestic violence. When love turns sour, the results can be sickening. Let's look at this patient. I don't care what she did. It's not worth doing this to yourself. You could so easily crush your nerves or tendons. Look, it's not so bad. Most of this blood isn't even yours. There you go. Better now? 
To stop this ever happening again, I'm going to take you through some preventative techniques. Rule number one, never use your fists. Do what middle class men do when they are angry with their wives. Use verbal abuse. Verbal abuse? Will that work? It certainly will, and I'll show you how. Now, the worst thing you can say to any woman is this. <clears throat> you are fat. You try it. You're fat. Very good. It doesn't matter if it's true. The more you say it, the more she will believe it. It will start to chip away at her self-worth. Then to further break her spirit, take any opportunity to remind her that without you, she is nothing. Without me, you're nothing. Hear that? Nothing. Is that all right? Not too much? No, that's good. Go with your instincts. Then it's a good idea to top it all off with the occasional line about her being so useless that you are thinking of leaving her. You never get anything right. Oh, I'm so close to leaving you. Who's going to want someone as useless as you? Well done. You're really getting the hang of this. By now, her self-esteem will be so low the threat that you might leave her is much more frightening than anything you can do with your fists. Of course, you have no intention of leaving her. Why would you, after putting in all this groundwork? Is that all it takes? That's right. After that, she'll be a blubbering heap cowering in the corner of the kitchen floor. Exactly the same result as if you punched her half a dozen times, but at no risk of physical injury to yourself. Oh, thanks, Dr. Rudy. My pleasure. Because there's no point in hurting a woman if you hurt yourself as well. It just makes twice as much work for me. Bana. Your wife probably might be the mother of your children, so, I mean, that's just not on, you know, hurting, you know, something that's connected to you like that. If someone hits you, I mean, the pain goes away, but what they said to you stays in your mind, yeah. and that affects you, your, your, your life, your lifestyle, and whatever you ever want to do in life. I've probably hit a few fellas in my time as well, you know, just because, um, I don't know, you just feel the need and, you know, I do kickboxing and stuff now, but yeah, I don't think it's just necessarily men hitting women at all. More great advice for the average Aussie bloke. Yep, especially for guys like me, I'm a handyman. My hands are delicate tools, they're my livelihood. I don't want anything to happen to them. And nothing will now, thanks to Dr Rudy. Yep. Gee, Sigourney, take a look at that mailbag. So many problems. Oh, Todd, mate, they're not all problems. Some of them are just letters to tell us how helpful our expert advice has been. It's so satisfying to know that we're making a difference out there. Yep, I live to give. Let me read you this one from Mick from North Melbourne. You guys totally rock. It's been fully sick having news back on the telly, helping me and me mates do stuff and that. The chicks are hot and the guys rule heaps. Stay bent. I think that speaks for all Australians. Totally. And if any of you guys have got a problem that's given you the irrits, or you just want to drop us a line, like Mick, why not write in to Life Support? Locked bag 028. Crow's Nest. 1585. And right now, we're going to take a look at this. Jury duty. How the hell did they get my name? I thought I'd had that taken care of. What sort of fascist state is it that forces you to go to court and cast judgement on everybody? Jury duty is a prerogative we all want to evade in a healthy democracy. And it's simple, if you know what to do. Miss Tenney, what are your thoughts on mandatory sentencing for murder? I'm a firm believer in the death penalty for abortionists. If you ask me, the maximum sentences for most crimes isn't long enough, especially shoplifting. I heard the other day that the government was talking about closing down some of the prisons. Shouldn't we be building more? How will these people ever learn if they're not punished? And the punishment never seems to fit the crime. We have to be firm with these drug dealers and rapists. They should be locked up for as long as possible. Look at Thailand. Look at Saudi Arabia. And there you go. There's no way any defence lawyer will agree to have someone like me sitting on a jury. And if you're not sure what to say, Talkback Radio is full of intolerant opinions and reactionary ideas you can use. Just spray these at the boys in court and your free time's yours again. See ya.
Shopping has to be one of the most relaxing and rewarding experiences around for today's modern woman. But the most common mistake a conscientious fashion shopper can make is buying an item that you can't accessorise with the rest of your wardrobe. And trying to remember the exact colour shade of every item of clothing that you have would be absolutely maddening. So here's an easy way to make sure you always buy the right outfit. All you need is one of these. Excuse me, I'm trying to pick the right colour. Do you mind holding them up? Thank you. Now, while the sales girl is temporarily blinded, simply cut a small piece of fabric from each of the garments you're interested in. Thanks. Then when you're at home, test your cuttings against the rest of your wardrobe. That's the one. Now you know exactly what to buy. I like it, but it's damaged. How about 50% off? Oh, sorry, the button on this thing is so sensitive. Not that you actually have to go home with the damaged one. Sigourney, that was quite unusual advice. Yeah, what a great idea. I'm impressed. <laughs> oh, Penny. Yeah, I guess I'm impressed too. No, I'm serious. I really am learning more and more from you every week. That was a pretty cool scam. <laughs> I don't think of it as a scam, Penny. I just think it makes sense to save money for those in-between times when you can't bank on a boat. Oh, well, I wouldn't bank on a bloke to save my life. But freaking the fascist fashion mafia out appeals no end. Well, disbelieve if you must, but here we are and it's the end of another show. And for you at home, I hope the search for your solution ended satisfactorily. If not, there's no need to worry. Because we will be here for you again next week. With more advice you won't find on any other lifestyle show. That's right. Until then, why not experience the joy of sponsoring a child? Or painting a self-portrait? In the meantime, you Australians look out for one another. Yep, and while you're doing that, don't forget to look out for yourself. Good, Good night, night, Australia. Australia.